Welcome to Nen. Today I am going to take your English as well as geography class. Let me first take your English class. Take out the English literature book Roots, chapter A, The Night of the Tragedy. Let me tell you the story in just. Before telling the story, let me tell introduce with the characters of the story. Emily Englethrop. She was a rich lady and owner of Style Course and the wife of Alfred Englethrop, who was Emily's second husband. Lawrence Cavendish, Emily's younger stepson, who is known to have studied medicine. Mary Cavendish, John's wife and a friend of Dr. Birkistan, Cynthia Murdoch. She is the daughter of a deceased friend of the family who performs wartime work at the nearby hospital pharmacy. Dr. Birkistan, a well-known toxicologist, Dr. Wilkins, the family physician, Dorcas, a major style, Arthur Hastings, a guest as style, Pyrrhus, friend, and the narrators. Now, let me tell the story in just all of a sudden in the midnight. The narrator was woken up by the sound of Lawrence Cavendish, who was holding a candle in his hand and had a pale look on his face as if something went wrong. On asking Lawrence, replied that his ill mother who seems to be having some type of fit has unfortunately locked herself in. Hearing so, the narrator sprang out of bed and started following Lawrence, then John and two other servants to join them. By the time when the whole household gathered at Mrs. Englishman's door, John rattled the handle, but it was bolted from inside. Dorcas the maid commented about poor mistress. Suddenly, the narrator realized that Mrs. Englethrop was not present there. John opened the door of his father's room, which was totally dark. Through the dim light of the candle in Lawrence's hand, they saw that the room was empty. They rushed to the other door, though through which they could see Englethrop, but all were bolted from inside. All were too tired and were panting heavily, but at last, the door was flung open. Together they went inside with Lawrence holding his candle and found Mrs. Englethrop lying on the bed with her shaking body. Seeing all, she felt relaxed but couldn't get up. John lit the room with gas lamp. After finishing his work, the narrator turned to Lawrence to take leave from him. But he couldn't utter a word on seeing Lawrence's pale and frightening face. Mrs. Englethrop, in her weak and feeble voice, said that she was feeling better and she had been stupid to lock herself in. Suddenly, the narrator found a shadow on the bed. The narrator looked up and saw Mary Cavendish and Cynthia standing with a pale and frightening face. As the clock struck five, they found themselves helpless when Mrs. Englethrop cried out in acute pain. Then Dr. Burstein entered the room and looked at the patient on the bed. Mrs. Englethrop stared at the doctor, cried out, Alfred, Alfred, and fell motionless on the pillow. The doctor examined the patient, prescribed medicines, and advised for artificial respiration. All was the doctor, though they knew that it was too late and had little hope. Finally, when the doctor had finished all his work, at the very moment they heard Dr. Wilkins Mrs. Englethrop's own doctor and a short-heighted fat old man coming in. In a few words, Dr. Burstein explained everything. Dr. Wilkinson regretted about the poor lady who always worked against his advice. The narrator noticed that Burstein observing the local, was observing the local doctor while speaking. Dr. Burstein wanted to speak privately to the local doctor, so he turned to John for permission. All went out, leaving the two doctors alone and the door got closed. The narrator was too excited as he could guess something. So when Mary Cavendish asked about Dr. Burstein's peculiar character, he whispered that the lady might have been poisoned. The narrator was sure that Dr. Burstein had suspected that Mary Cavendish was shocked to hear it and wanted to live alone. So the narrator left her alone, then went to the dinner room and joined 
John and Lawrence. There he inquired after Mr. Mr. Englishoff, who was not present at home. At last, they saw the doctors coming down the stairs. Doctor Wilkins asked John for his consent to a postmortem, as the doctors were unable to give a death certificate under such circumstances. Finding no alternative, John readily agreed. Doctor Wilkins thanked and proposed the work to take place at night. Doctor Bernstein handed over the keys of the room, saying he had locked them and it would remain locked for the present day. So the doctors departed. Soon an idea struck the narrator's mind. He asked John to consult his friend Pyrrhus, who was a famous detective, and investigate the matter. If there had been any foul play, Lawrence angrily blamed Doctor Bernstein for making a false discovery and poisoning them. John too hesitated. It seemed that the family did not want any unnecessary gossip. Seeing such situation, the narrator didn't want to interfere and so wanted everything to go on their own way. It was six o'clock when he looked at his watch and determined to leave without wasting time. Five minutes before leaving, he went to the library and discovered a medical book with the descriptions of strychnine poisoning. And with this, I'm ending my today's English class. Let me start a geography class. Take out your geography book, chapter six: Energy and Power Resources. Today, I'm going to explain the page fifty-six and fifty-seven. Capacity to do work is called energy. Air, water, minerals, and forest are different kinds of resources. Now, let me tell you what is resources. A resources is something that satisfies human wants. Energy resources are used in every sphere of life. That is from cooking food to flying airplane. With the growing population, our consumption of energy is also increasing. Sources of energy. There are five main types of energy resources. That is coal, oil, natural gas, falling water, and nuclear fusion. Coal, oil, and natural gas are of organic origin and are called fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are organic in nature, which are obtained from remains of dead plants and animals, and are forms of stored solar energy. Non-renewable energy resources. They are finite energy resources that cannot be renewed in human lifetime. They are limited in supply and take millions of years to form. Coal, petroleum, and natural gas are non-renewable resource energy resources. Coal. It is obtained from decayed trees and plants which remain buried under sediment. They become decomposed and compressed in course of time due to actions of heat and pressure. They become black coal. For centuries, coal was used to provide heat or for domestic purposes. It became the most efficient power for driving turbines to release energy in the form of electricity. Pit, lignite, and anthracite. Are some of the coal that are used. Countries dependent on coal are China, USA, Japan, India, Russia, Germany, and Italy. And with this, I am ending my today's class. Goodbye.